We're now going to discuss Descartes' famous evil genius and how he gets to his evil genius reason for doubting whatever he can doubt. And he points out, he starts talking, well, God, you know, he has this idea of God. And he's not saying, look, I'm not saying God exists, God doesn't, but God is powerful enough to deceive him about everything. And not only things that are contingent, but all that are knowable a posteriori, but also the things that you know just by thinking about it. That is, God is so powerful, such a powerful being, that he can make me incorrectly understand things about math, about geometry. And, well, I'm going to say that this is Descartes' answer to kind of the first, um, the first view of the... Um, the where he starts out, God could deceive me. It, and perhaps he doesn't exactly say this, but if you think about it, look, God's perfect. You know, hence God's good. And a good being, like God, would not be a deceiver. He wouldn't create me so that I couldn't know anything. It would not be the right thing to do. And when he gets to the fourth meditation, he explains that a little bit more. But he says... You know, this he's a little worried whether this is a powerful enough reason. So as a result, he gives what's become known as the evil genius argument. And what is the evil genius argument? The evil genius is, well, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, I have an idea that there could be a being who's kind of similar to God. In how is he similar? He's really, really, really powerful. And he's really, really, really smart. But he's not really, really, really good like God is. So this being could deceive me about everything. That is, every time I come to believe something, he could make sure that whatever it is that I am believing is false. And it looks like, and this is Descartes' strongest reason now that he has for doubting things, as he now has a reason to doubt, oops, excuse me, he now has reason to doubt the a posteriori, the contingent truths, although he had other reasons to doubt it. But now the a priori, the necessary truths, the truths of mathematics, the truths of geometry, those are the things that Descartes has now given reason for doubt. And this takes us to the end of the first meditation with Descartes' powerful reasons for doubting and We'll pick up with the second meditation where Descartes picks this up.